Hey traders, checking in on the stock market today. So not a whole lot going on in the broader market. Some inside bars out there. Really, it was the electric vehicle space stealing the show. Tesla hitting all-time highs. NIO with a bunch of strength as well. And we'll go over Fubo and a new style of trade that I'm stumbling on, but learning and enjoying the challenge and learning process of a new trade setup. Hey there, swing traders. This is our first ever sale of the TCG swing report here for the end of the year. Click the link and I will put that in the top pinned comment of this YouTube video and enter the code NY21 for 21% off. Was $700 for the year and now it is $553, which is less than $50 a month. Appreciate your support. Let's get to the charts. Checking in on the broader market. So we've got SPY with an inside bar. Again, nothing going on. If it breaks bearish, we look for a daily higher low compared to 362.03. Bulls have space to work with about 3% or so. And all-time high is right there at 374. We failed to break it by 90 cents, but the bears also didn't have any follow-through either. And really, it was just back down to QQQ. And yesterday, QQQ bulls built a base of support by playing defense at 312. 312.07, 312.03, 312.29. This morning, 312.33, end of the day, 312.41. And it was very, that's that's when things are easy because we can just say, if 312 does not break, bears prove absolutely nothing. And in the end, bears proved absolutely nothing. So if 312 breaks from here, that's QQQ is a daily inside bar as well. And again, volume's dropping off the holiday week here. We got one more trading day tomorrow. But if the inside bar breaks bearish, same as SPY, we look for the daily higher low compared to our line in the sand level, 30360. Bulls have space to work with to maintain that uptrend. IWM, profit taking the last couple of days, but starting its bounce. So two days of pullback. And you're going to see that across the board with, again, what is the rundown that we did yesterday showing this profit taking. It was TAN. So TAN with its bounce day, XBI with its bounce day, they're inside bars, but obviously putting a stop to the pullback and bouncing a bit. ARKG was the other one, inside bar and bounce. So definitely noticing correlations between these smaller caps and these subsectors, and they are forming inside bars as well. Tons of inside bars out there. I didn't realize how many we had today. If this inside bar breaks bullish on IWM tomorrow over 197.48, our daily higher low is set at 193.44, and we're looking back up at the all-time high. If it breaks bearish, our daily higher low is not set yet. XLV, weekly time frame continues to tighten up. Again, that's what I care about. I'm not even going to go to the daily chart. It's either a break of 113.27 resistance or a break of 109.37 support. We're closer to a bull break than a bear break. But as long as we are within this range, it's a clear equilibrium without a break. Financial sector, daily inside bar. Pretty much a daily inside bar yesterday. We did break support by a few pennies. But again, same as the other names, if this inside bar breaks bearish, we look for a daily higher low compared to 28.23, which is about 3% away. So bulls have a line in the sand, daily support levels to be watching. Currently inside bars. And if we break bearish, we look for daily higher lows unless there's some kind of massive bear volume behind it. Biotech sector inside bar today. So bounce follow through after a lack of bounce follow through yesterday. And hourly higher low trying to form at 143.13. Bulls would have to break 145.64 to confirm an hourly trend chain and confirm the daily higher low has been set. Size of the pullback significant enough that even if this inside bar breaks bullish from here and starts this daily bounce, we are going to look for a daily lower high compared to the all-time high, 152.70. And again, there's a lot of names doing the same thing. SQ, inside bar, solid close, but we're going to look for a daily lower high compared to its all-time high. And I can't even remember now off the top of my head, but there's a bunch of names that are doing this same thing on this current pullback. SMH semiconductors, solid green day today, all about 219.40 and 221.79, bulls holding the base of support in the 210s and now heading up to test resistance. It is still in equilibrium at this point, but don't read my tweets, but we are 
and we have some breathing room. We're above support now. We were on the verge of a bear break. We did not break bearish. And now we're looking back up towards resistance. We are $4 from an all-time high and $7 from a bear break, $7 plus. Solar sector, daily inside bar like everybody else. If it breaks bullish, all-time high on watch at 107.45. Tons of inside bars, and actually technically it wasn't an inside bar. We broke the high of yesterday by 15 pennies, but there's a lot of inside bars out there overall. The VIX is a daily inside bar. That's not surprising. The dollar broke bearish, clear follow through, back to square one for any bounce attempts. Next time we do bounce, we're looking for a daily lower high compared to 91.02. I am going to constantly be reminding you all to keep an eye on the dollar. The bulls are not proving a thing to us, but... We have to be monitoring it pretty darn close. Gold with a bull break of its daily inside bar, but we're still range bound from that one day's candle. And I don't care unless we break 1907 or 1855. It's nice that we're closer towards resistance, but we need to break and close over 1900 for follow through on this daily uptrend. Silver remaining tight, trying to break resistance right now. All about 27.41. So comfortable in those metals positions right now. And I actually added an IRA position today in TLT. I like this monthly equilibrium. Just a nice low risk trade. And again, I don't want dollars sitting in my IRA when the dollar is dumping. So we have our high, all time high, low of 153.16, lower high, and trying for the higher low. So my play is an entry off of 153. And if 153 holds, we're then going to look for a monthly lower high compared to 172.25. And if 153 does not hold, I will stop out. And smaller position sizes on my swing trades. So if I stop out and 153 breaks, I lose a day maker. And if we get a monthly higher low and 153 holds, I'll probably hold it until the equilibrium breaks. So the reward would certainly be a couple times more than what the risk would be. But longer term time frame support levels in uptrends, and that is my trade that I am in in my IRA now on GLD, SLV, and now TLT. Convenient they all rhyme. And my spy trade was not based on long term support levels, it was just the sky is falling by some positions when the sky is falling. Miners, solid green day today. Again, fairly range bound as well. 37.64 breaking would be very notable for the bulls to save this weak weekly bounce. If we can get back over that high, it will no longer be a weak weekly bounce. So solid green day there. Oil's not doing anything, which is just fine for the bulls. When the burden of proof is on the bears, doing nothing is just fine for the bulls. Have to see a bear break of 47.50 for us to say daily lower high is set. And we're then looking back at 46.16 support from there. Natural gas, multiple daily inside bars. If they break bullish, we scout a lower high compared to 277. And if they break bearish, we're looking right back at the low of 226. So that's where we stand. Congrats to the Tesla bulls. All time highs. Look at the strength on Tesla just keeping these higher lows. Daily EMA 12 support for the last six weeks. We need to break a 700 for it to be convincing. We got an all-time high, but only by a couple dollars. So need to get over 700 tomorrow for follow-through. Look at the strength of NIO as well. Daily higher lows set, just like that. We are we're up 15% on NIO in two days. And we're looking back to the high of 49.84. I was making an attempt at the daily higher low on NIO on Monday. Just a day too soon and missed a nice entry. I would have liked a swing position for that daily high or low, but focused on it on the wrong day. And its weekly chart is staying strong as well. And as I've said for the US marijuana sector, it's the same thing, in my opinion, for a name like Tesla. There's just nothing that's going to derail those bulls unless the broader market does it, in my opinion. So the broader market just keeps staying strong and keeps seeing little daily higher lows and keeps all-time highs, then there's nothing saying that Tesla can't do the same thing. Let's look at Fubo. So Fubo, huge dump today. 
So red flag right out of the gate, just in the sense that we had to break $40 for the daily higher low to be set and for the bounce to start. We had a nice bounce into the end of yesterday. Definitely sold. The key to these, these plays that I'm learning, let me zoom out a little bit. So I play equilibriums all the time on the two minute, the five minute, the hourly, the daily. This is an equilibrium. This, this trading style that we're about to look at is equilibrium on steroids with just massive amounts of volatility and massive amounts of range. And it's a lot harder to play. So over the last month, I have been practicing and observing these plays and attempting to trade them and just learning. So the first one went well, started off with a win by playing PLTR, same trade, blue sky breakout, all time high, significant pullback for the daily high or low, anticipating the equilibrium. So made a nice entry on this day, exited a little bit early, but exited, I think around 27, 28, solid big win. So, all right, I got that trade down. Then LAZR put me in my place, had a nice trade set up, was confident, saw accumulation and sideways trading. And then we had a bearish article, I think it was, one last flush down. Next day you have an upgrade. And as soon as that upgrade came out, I said, oh, well, there's the bottom. And same trade, all time high, massive pullback, equilibrium, but they shook me out. So I was one for two at this point on this trade style. And once I got stopped out, it was just okay. Not gonna keep trying here, done with the trade. And it frustrated me a little bit with how it stopped me out. And obviously the last thing I want to do is keep trading the same ticker, looking for the same results and just racking up a bunch of losses. So it was one and done on my attempt on LAZR. And now trying the same trade attempt on FUBO. So FUBO failed to break resistance. And what I learned, I'm learning things every time I go. So on LAZR, I learned sell, as long as you're in an hourly downtrend, sell into the strength. Because what my mind was doing as I was preparing for that trade on LAZR was, okay, I know I'm looking bigger picture. And this is flipping the switch on my day trader mindset. Because as a day trader, I lock in my profit quick all the time and I leave money on the table all the time. And I'm perfectly fine doing so. But when I'm looking on the daily time frame, I have to remind myself, you're not just looking for an hourly bounce, you're looking for 10 to 30% on the daily time frame. Let the trade play out. So I remind myself that, but that makes me miss opportunity on the short term. So looking at LAZR when it was dumping, we had huge bounces on the way down where 35 to 38, there's 10%. That was an extended hours, but 27 to 31, there's another 15%. 25 up to 28, there's another 6% bounce. And every time we would bounce six to 10%, and then just drop to a lower low and give it all back. So I sat through that and I did not capitalize on selling into strength and I learned my lesson. So I would still say that I have a I have failed at this point on the Fubo, Fubo trade. In the end, I exited my position with a tiny win, pretty much break even. And that's just from day trading. You know, I got my core position, we'll call it one position, and I had a break even maybe at 37. But then I was day trading positions twice that size. And if I flip twice that size for 50 cents, my core position break even just dropped a dollar. So by doing that, and I'm willing to trade more larger positions on day trading, because again, there's no risk of overnight news. There's no gap down. I have very clearly set levels, very clear risk to reward. And so I was able to get my break even down to about 33 and actually it was down to about 30 and change, but then I had a losing trade towards the end of the day that brought my average up to 33. But long story short, what has kept me break even as opposed to being down five to 10%, keeping in mind it would be a smaller position because of that amount of volatility, but from being kept me from being down because I've been selling into strength. So this morning I got done the live stream and I sold half of my position in the 38s. 3860s, which was just under the high of the day. Why? Because 3987 was resistance. And at that point in time, we had just bounced 10%. If you're in an hourly downtrend and you bounce 10%, you absolutely need to take partial profit on this kind of trade. And again, that's a lesson that I'm taking from LAZR and applying it to this one. 
So that, that's what kept today from being a bloodbath for me, that sell right there, because that was locking in profit and it dropped my break even from my 37 down to you know 35 or lower. And then I traded another couple oversold bounces. Aside from that, I have just been loving staring at the price action. And we had shares unlocking today and that's what the volume is on Fubo, but just watching how they're selling and how they're selling on the ask and how they're constantly refilling it and watching when they pull off as far as selling to let the price bounce because they don't want to dump things. And it's just, it's humbling to be attempting this new style and stumbling a bit because I'm coming from a point of just feeling like I can't lose two months in a row, just great consistency. And now I've got a new trade style and it's a nice new challenge. It's, it's perking me up a little bit. And while I'm not making nice gains on these trades, I am absolutely learning and I will be applying these lessons in the future. We also had a short report on FUBO right at the low of the day. And they timed that obviously intentionally where they released it literally right as we were testing the low of the day support, which was a bit of a double bottom. And you can see the volume and then flush on that short report. And it reminds me of LAZR a lot because LAZR, it looked like the bottom was set. We had a, a stage of accumulation that led to a big spike up. And then we had a bearish article and we dumped the next day. Same thing here where we had the accumulation yesterday, a big spike up into the end of yesterday. And then more downside today and then a short report to add to that downside. So I have little doubt that we will find a daily higher low and bounce 30% plus. I just don't know where. And because I'm essentially break even, I am open to trying again. If I was down a day or a two day loser, I'd be done with it. Because again, I'm not just gonna keep trying the same trade if I'm failing. But long story short, liking the challenge, learning stuff, enjoying it, not making much money on these trades, but I know that if I keep putting in the effort and the education on this style of trade, at some point down the road, one year, three years, 12 years from now, I'll be rolling in it on this trade style. So that's all I got for today. I hope you're well. I've got no new end of content and the video content. So we'll go back to some point in time. One of the chart guys members ended up taking a picture from this video and making me the guy on the Guzong, which is the instrument Wikipedia page. And I had a long run there. And it was funny because I would get a message from someone who knew me through a friend of a friend and say, what are you doing on the Guzong? Are you a professional player? Why are you on the Wikipedia page? Nope. But it's a fun instrument. Have a good holiday break. New Year's. Be safe. Or don't. Whatever you want.